Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create animations that have bounce, like in these examples. I put together a free script called Easy Inertia that makes this really easy. If you have some experience with this kind of animation, then you probably know about the expression that creates animations like this. Well, this script utilizes that expression, but it does it in a little more user-friendly way with an easy way to apply, change settings, and have all the layers look to one control. You can download the script by using the link in the video description below. All right, let's get started. To install the script, all you have to do is put it in your script UI folder. To find that folder, all you need to do is go into your applications and choose the version of After Effects that you're using. Then you go to Scripts, Script UI Panels, and then you can just paste it right in here. Then all you need to do is restart After Effects and you're good to go. Inside of After Effects, to access the script, you just need to go to Window, Easy Inertia. This brings up the panel and you can drag it and dock it wherever you see fit in your UI. Now I quickly want to go over the interface itself just to explain what all these buttons do. At the top, there's options for composition and layer. This lets you choose between having the parameters for the bounce on an adjustment layer that works composition wide or just specifically to the layer that you're applying it to. Below those two options, there's five checkboxes for your transform properties. They're all represented by their shortcut. So P is position, S is scale, R is rotation, T is opacity, and A is anchor point. In the next row, there's an about button, a clear button, and an apply button. So if you hit the clear button, it'll get rid of the bounce expression or any expression really for the selected properties above. While apply will apply the bounce expression to any of the properties checked above. And that covers the interface. So just to give you guys a quick example, let's make a new composition and I'll make it 1920 by 1080 and I'll hit okay. Inside this new composition, I'll make a new shape layer by going to layer, new shape layer. Then I'll add a rectangle and I'll add a fill. At frame zero, I'll pull up the position with P on the keyboard. Then I'll hold shift and hit S and R to bring up scale and rotation as well. Then I'll set a keyframe for scale and rotation by clicking the stopwatch. I'll zoom into my timeline a little bit and maybe around frame seven, I'll change my scale to 200% and my rotation to 180 degrees. I'll actually go back to frame zero and set that original scale keyframe to zero. Then at around frame 20, I'll set a keyframe for position and I'll go a little bit forward from there and I'll drag that shape over to add another keyframe to the position. I'll bring in my work area and I'll RAM preview this. So this is the animation, it's not great looking but I think if we add some bounce to it, it'll look pretty good. So with my layer selected, I'll go over to Easy Inertia and I will select Position, Scale, and Rotation. Then I'll hit Apply. You'll see that my text turns red here and that's because there is an expression. And if I twirl down the expression menu, you can see that there's this big long expression in here. You'll also notice that there's a new adjustment layer and it's called physics adjustment. And if you go to your effect controls, there's amplitude, frequency, and decay. Now it's because I have composition selected that it made a new adjustment layer. If I had layer selected, these three sliders would be applied to my shape layer here. Now, if I ran preview, you can see that there's a nice little bounce on everything. And all of this can be changed with these three sliders, amplitude, frequency, and decay, but we'll get into that in some of these other examples. In this first example, there's three circles that all have the same scale keyframes, but they get very different results, and that's because they have different values applied to their amplitude, frequency, and decay sliders. This first blue circle has the default settings from Easy Inertia, which are three for the amplitude, two and a half for frequency, and five for the decay. The yellow one, which as you can see, gets a lot bigger, has a lot more overshoot, has an amplitude of eight, a frequency of 2.5 and a decay of three. So its amplitude has been increased and its decay has been decreased. This third red circle has the amplitude cranked up to five and the frequency cranked up to three and a half. The decay has been dropped to two. Now let's look at these again. 
So by looking at these, you can kind of figure out what all these sliders are doing. Amplitude is increasing the amount of overshoot and bounce back. So the higher the value of amplitude, the more extreme the bounce is going to be. Frequency increases how quickly the bounce is. So the higher the value in frequency, the quicker it'll bounce. Decay is like the fall off of this expression. So the higher the value of decay, the faster it'll subside. As you can see in these three examples, just changing these values a little bit can go a long way. Here in example two, I've got five squares with position keyframes that are nearly identical. They're just offset in the Y axis, and then they're offset in time. They're all being controlled by my physics adjustment layer, so I can change the values for amplitude, frequency, and decay all at once with one value instead of changing it for each one individually. So if I wanted to change something like my amplitude, I could crank that up to 10 and they'll start bouncing way more. And all I had to do was change that value once. This is super helpful, especially when you get into a lot of layers that have this expression on it. Over in example three, I've got a little pendulum set up. And in this one, you can see I've cranked up my amplitude quite a bit to 20 and I've dropped my frequency down and my decay down to one. So this means that it'll keep bouncing for a lot longer. You can see that it bounces quite a bit and yet there's still only two keyframes. I could make this go even further by decreasing the decay further. If I went down to say 0.4, then it will just bounce and bounce and bounce for a lot longer. To show you guys a little bit more clearly what's happening, I can go to my pendulum layer and click on the rotation and go to my graph editor. And you can see that these are my keyframe values. But if I click this little button and show the post expression graph, you can see what's happening and you can see just how far it's going. That's a lot of animation for just two keyframes, which is pretty cool that you can do that. In example four, I've got a little chat bubble that's just animating up with scale and rotation. Let's do this one together. So I'll go ahead and I'll select my chat bubble and then I'll select scale and rotation and hit the clear button. So that gets rid of the expression. Then I'll go ahead and get rid of the keyframes and then I'll delete my physics adjustment layer. I'll move my playhead over to frame seven and I'll set a keyframe for scale and rotation for 100% and zero degrees. Then over at frame zero, I'll set the rotation to negative 90 and then I'll set my scale for zero. When I ran preview that, you can see it doesn't look that great. But what I can do now is go over to my easy inertia panel and hit apply with scale and rotation selected. And now if I ran preview, I've got that nice bounce. Over in example five, I've got this ambulance coming in super fast, screeching to a halt, and then the body sort of bounces down as it comes to that stop. Let's walk through this one together too. So again, I'll start by selecting the body because it's got the expression on it, going to my rotation and clearing that out. Then I'll go over here and delete all my keyframes. You'll see that I've broken this down so that I have just the body of the ambulance and then I have the front wheels and the back wheels on separate layers. So that way I can rotate the body separately. Then I just move them all with this car control null that they're all parented to. So I'll go ahead and delete the position keyframe on the car control. I'll also delete the physics adjustment layer. At frame 23, I'll go ahead and set a rotation keyframe for the car body. And you'll notice that I've moved my anchor point over here so that it's rotating from this point rather than the center of the layer. I move my playhead over to frame 20 and I'll change that value to one and a half degrees. So it's just got a slight rotation up. I'll also set a position keyframe for the car control null. Then I'll come over to frame zero and I'll drag my X position on that car control null so that it starts off screen. Then I'll also change my rotation to zero degrees. I'll highlight these keyframes at frame 20, and then I'll right click and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then I'll right click on one of them again and go to keyframe velocity. And I'll set that incoming velocity percentage to 100%. So you'll see as the rotation comes down, it just sort of stops there. And in real life, it would give it a little bit of bounce. And I think it'll just look a little bit better if we do that. So if I highlight the body and I go over to my easy inertia panel, I've already got rotation selected and then I'll hit apply. And maybe on this, I'll increase the amplitude to four and bring down the decay to four. 
And if I ram PV that, I think that's looking really good. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys find Easy Inertia as helpful as I do. So give it a download and let us know what you think. And if you're interested in seeing more tutorials about Premiere and After Effects, please subscribe to our channel because we're making new videos all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.